What is up guys, my name is Barry Michael Doyle and welcome to another video where I teach you about more random React JavaScript stuff. So in this video we're going to talk about cleaning up complex render functions using a little process I like to call subrendering, which is probably something everyone else calls it anyway. This is basically a technique to help your code become more maintainable and readable and it's just a nice practice to clean up your rendering functions. Anyway, before we continue, this video is inspired by the book Code Complete by Steve McConnell. I love this book. It's flipping amazing. You should definitely check it out. Uh, there's a link to the Kindle version on Amazon below in the description. So definitely check it out if you're interested in improving your software development skills. Anyway, let's head over to some code. Right, so here we are in a complicated React JavaScript component. Um, okay, it's not that complicated, but I'll explain it through. So we've got our normal class here. Pretty straightforward. These are some random components that aren't very important. We're just going to use them as an example of rendering things. Then our component has a state here. There's a has error. Pretend that we are loading a component and an API call is happening. We'll have a component did mount function here, an event handler, which basically you'll start the API call. Is loading will become true because it starts loading information. And we're expecting it to successfully return results. So when results are returned, this results state here would be set to the results and not just an empty array. The results will be a list of items. And then if an error occurs during that, we just keep it as results empty and we'll set loading to false, but we'll set error to true. So that's the plan there. So we've got this, this component that measures like lifecycle stuff. Then we head down into the render function over here. So here's our render function. And if you look at it, it's pretty weird to see what's going on. You should understand it. It's not too complicated. So we've got our, our different values from the state has error is loading results. So first of all, we have our wrapping container here, just pretending that we might have other content here. We're rendering stuff inside here. So what this function here, this return basically does is it checks, is it loading return the loading components? This is the loading component that we've pulled up from here. And, uh, if it's not, then we do the else statement, which is this whole block over here. So then we check inside here. So it's definitely not loading. Does it have an error? So if it does have an error, yes, then we render the error component. Now, if it doesn't, then we render this. So once we know it's not loading, there's no errors. We check here. If this results.length is zero, then we render no results because technically results successfully returned in this component demand function but they are, they're empty. There's no results. So the next thing, if there are results, we do the else statement and we finally return results here. Now there's nothing really wrong with this. It works. It's just, if you're looking at it from a glance, it's a bit confusing to see what's going on. You've got to actually go look down at individual statements. What's really happening here. Uh, so it gets very confusing. So we're going to teach you how to clean up things a bit here. First of all, I don't know if you've heard me speak about fragments, but these divs are pointless because there are no, there's basically no, wait, what did I do? Things are going wrong here. Okay, my <laughs> my IDE doesn't recognize this, this strategy. It's complaining and weird, but I usually use TypeScript and that's the right thing. So this is to do fragments if you want to do a shorthand syntax of fragments. So technically what we're doing here is we're doing a fragment and let me just copy that in in every place because those divs were pretty useless and you'll be importing fragment from here but if you do it that other shorthand syntax that i showed you just now it works in babel 7 and it works in typescript i use typescript at work so this is a jsx file when usually i use tsx files so that's why my ide is a bit confused anyway these are fragments they're basically they act as a wrapper because these, none of these would work if they weren't wrappers because it would complain about you rendering multiple components in one place. So I use these to clean it up. There's some blog posts I've written on this and a video. Uh, you can check out my website in the description below and you might hunt for that blog post. Anyway, back to the video. So there are multiple ways of dealing with this. Um, one technique that I have used was creating a, a component that specifically handles the rendering. So I'll take the component, I'll call it component renderer. We can probably call it something else and I'm gonna spread the state props through. So wait, my typing sucks. This dot state, and this is our component renderer. So we can make this component up here. I'd usually put it in another file because that's the right thing to do, but we can make this as a stateless functional component and we can take in our state down here. So we're passing each one of these in as props individually. 
so we can get them over here. And uh, what we want to do here is handle our rendering inside this component. So what you would do is you'd first check if is loading. And if it is loading, you can return with returning the loading component, which is awesome. And then remember, if you're returning in a function, this instantly exits the function because the return statement has happened. So you don't have to do an else if, now you can just do an if. So what we were doing down there earlier was a whole bunch of if, else, if, else things. But over here, we don't have to do if, else, because once this happens, the rest of the function doesn't carry on with its, its loading because it's already returned something. So it knows it's only got to return one thing, so it moves out of the function and back into the rendering function. In which case, we close the container and nothing happens. So we've got is loading, uh, if has error, we can return, if I could spell, the error component. And that would be done like that. Wow, my typing is terrible today. I'm not used to this keyboard. Anyway, I'm panicking under pressure. It's been so long since I made a video. And then if results dot length is equal to zero, then we will return the no results. And I've got to say no results. So, oh, <laughs> this over here, I, I meant to return no results as well as a component. So if you're wondering like, where does that come from? It's also from the components that we, it's a bit out of the scope of this video. So finally, we can just return now. We don't have to say an else statement because the only other option is that there are successful results given our props. So we can just return our results component. So this is really cool. You can handle it like that, but this really isn't a real, like you don't have to worry about splitting this out to another component. Another way is, this is basically sub-rendering, by the way. But another way to do it is move this entire logic into a specific thing in our class. So we could say render uh, results. Yeah. And then in here, we could just decide to pass things. So I'm going to move all of this down into here. And that makes all of this unnecessary. And because we have, ignore this for now. Let me just sort out the lines. Because we have this context of the state for this this component, we can actually get everything from the state over here. So we can say const and all our little stuff has error is loading results. We can get all of that from this dot state because this lies inside our main class, which has access to this dot state. So we don't have to make a separate component for everything and move everything out. Then the way to implement this over here is you would just get rid of this. And in some curly brackets, we say this dot render results. Now I've made a video on binding this. This is a special case where you don't need to bind this because we're actually calling the function. We're not just referencing it. So we call this function right now as this is rendered, this gets called and then this happens. So this checks the state of our application. If it's loading, return loading. Otherwise, if it has error, return error. If there are no results, return the no results component. And if there are results, return results. So that is how this works. I have had another person comment and say like, why don't you just say error component like this? So bear in mind, before I go on, I recommend this approach. It's nice and clean. You can see right here that this is a state. So this is responsible, responsible for rendering things based on the state. And inside our main render function, everything is very clean. So you can easily read what's going on here quite easily. So I highly recommend this approach. There's another approach to doing this where you, you don't use any of this stuff here. You would make your error component, or let's say your loading component, and you pass through specifically loading equals loading. And you can have your error component and pass in specifically error equals error and so on with the results as well. And then inside your error component, you'd handle the logic of whether or not it should render based on that prop and inside loading, you should handle whether or not it should render. I don't recommend this approach because you suddenly moved your rendering logic to different places and it gets a bit confusing. Rather have all your rendering done here. So let's move back to this approach that we have right over here. So this dot render results 
And that is how that works. And because we're not using the state here anymore, we can actually get rid of this declaration. Sorry, I don't have a linter going at the moment. And that is how you accomplish sub-rendering. So guys, thank you very much for writing the video, or for watching the video, I'm not even talking straight. Uh, you can follow me on stuff like Medium, I write a lot of blog posts there. Uh, YouTube is where you are right now, so that's something. I've got a Facebook page. Um, I don't accept invites to like my private account. But there's a Facebook page called Barry Michael Doyle React Developer. You can follow me on Twitter or follow me on LinkedIn. Like connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm cool. I'll accept anyone on LinkedIn. So that's a cool thing. I think there's other places to find me, but you'll find me on my website. I've got a website that is Barry Michael Doyle, my name, .com, and you can just check that out and you should find me. It's pretty easy to find. If you Google me, you'll find out where I'm at. So I highly recommend you come check me out. Um, I make lots of React videos. I'm working on a course for React Native on how to build apps from beginning to end. It's definitely going to be cool, so be on the lookout for that. You should be expecting it in October 2018. Uh, but otherwise, if you're watching this in the past, like the video, subscribe. Looking forward to sharing more content with you guys soon. Cheers, guys. All the best.